So this is the Canon AF35ML. It's a uh, Canon point-and-shoot film camera from the early to mid 80s. Uh, this example was purchased on eBay and is non-functional. Uh, if I'm going to take a camera apart just for the lens, I'd prefer to take one apart that doesn't work as is. Um, so we'll be going through this and pulling out just this lens element. Luckily enough, uh, I can't really see it in this in the body right now, but the shutter assembly is behind the lens, not inside of it. That makes it much easier for us to pull the lens as one big chunk. Uh, we will be adapting this camera, or this lens, onto a Sony A7. Our end result will look pretty much exactly like this. Okay, so these are all the parts we're going to need today. We're gonna to need a adjustable temperature soldering iron, a uh, knife and pair of pliers, a set of screwdrivers to take this guy apart, we have a M42 to E-mount one millimeter adapter. We have a M42 to M42 uh, macro focus screw that we are going to use as our focus helicoid. We have two pieces of sandpaper, 80 grit and 220. Those will be used on our printed components later. We have the camera that we are going to adapt to, which in this case is a Sony A7. Uh, and then we have a pair of calipers, which we are going to use to measure the lens components in here and the components here so we can print the uh, interface. We just do that. Yep. I mean, if there's no screws, that's all just yep. snap, snap fit screws. in. So yeah, exactly. you can see that there are no screws that I missed. See that damage right there. This is what we're going for. So what we're going to do is start taking the screws off from the top to the bottom. Can't use that either. Oh yeah, there are so many things that go be doing in this. Yeah, that's like yeah. Or your unsuspecting friend. Okay, so these are the parts we're left with. We're left with the main body of the camera, some of the plastic housings, um, and most of the internal lens components that were uh, the, autofo the autofocus system, the aperture, and things like that. Um, some of you may want to remove this piece, this 40 millimeter uh, 1 to 1 9 ring. It does have that lovely Canon red ring on it. And you could actually pull this off and glue it onto the face of the printed elements if you wanted to keep the information from the original lens. However, all of this we will not be using. The only part we are interested in is this element. Uh, we will actually be doing a little bit of editing to this element. We will be taking off this plastic lobe here with this steel rod in it. This was the alignment rod for the autofocus system of the original camera, which we do not need and would indeed get in the way of our camera. Okay, so now we're going to take this lobe off. Before we do that, there is a very thin black metal ring around this that we do want to keep, but we're going to take it off so we don't damage it while we're working on uh, this lobe removal. So this just clips up underneath here. We can undo that all the way around the edges. Just use your fingernails so you don't scratch any of the components. That's our metal ring. We're going to set that to the side so we don't damage it. This is our offending lobe. We are now, you could cut this, you could sand it off, but I am simply going to snap it off with a pair of pliers. And 
and I think that that will be tight enough for our needs. Uh, if you want to smooth all this out, that's fine, but actually the black ring that goes back on it will sit proud of this section, so we don't really need to worry about how tight this is. All right, for this section, we're going to actually take our lens element. Now that we've reduced it to the constituent components, we've edited off this little lobe right here, and we've sanded some of these sections smooth. Um, we're going to me measure this so we can then make the 3D printed model of the, um, of the adapter that will take this and put it in the focus helicoid. So our goal is to use this, fo this focus helicoid, this lens, and this lens will sit just about like that in this piece. First thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a center line. My marker works. And draw a center line for our lens. And we're going to use the center line for drawing out the edge of our lens, but all of our measurements are going to be in diameter, not in ra radius, because of course it's easier to just measure everything and not do the math. If you do the math, you have a chance of making errors. I, I just keep everything in diameter. Uh, there's a few things we'll need to note as we go through. There's a very small vertical tab right here on the back of the lens. There is a jutting section that is the remainder of that lobe that was here. And we're not going to worry about the intricacies of this metal ring. We are going to simply treat it as a cylinder. So let's start at the top up here. This first section is a cylinder. We can measure that top section to be what looks like nine and a half millimeters. So this top section, I'm just going to draw a vertical line. It's going to be 9.5. I'm going to do this all in metric because most of the originals were in metric. Um, for the diameter of that section, I'm just going to take it across the entire piece. It appears to be, and you want to rotate this through because it will find the high and low spots around the cylinder. Uh, that is exactly 32 millimeters. So we are going to write 32, 32 millimeters, and then an arrow to that wall. And then what we're going to do, so we're going to come here and we are going to measure the depth of this angled portion, four millimeters. So we're gonna draw just a angled portion, doesn't really matter if it's accurate but it does matter that it is four millimeters tall. Then, since we can't really measure up to the edge of that angle, we're gonna take the next cylinder in line, which is this segment right here. 2.5 millimeters vertical. And now since that is a cylinder, we can measure across it. We're going to do that. We're also gonna be very careful to not touch our metal calipers to any of our lens elements as we do this. And that appears to be 21 millimeters. So that's 21 millimeters. And then what we want to do is we actually most likely want our 3D printed component to fit around the back of this glass. So this element has no chance of sliding backwards. So we're going to support it both on this place right here and this place up here. Um, so we're going to take this measurement across this rear lens element. So we have the inside diameter there. And that is going to be what looks like... Of course, I don't want to occlude the rear element, so I'm going to make it slightly too big. And that is going to be 16 millimeters. Okay, now we can check, make sure we have all of our measurements. Our only other concerns is this vertical tab here. So we're going to measure that. Now the important thing is, is that this sits at an angle to this pin. We have to put the negative for this pin and the negative for this area correct. They are unfortunately not directly across each other. Um, we can see that the center line, it shifts about 10 degrees to one side. So I can, sorry, I wrote this as 45, like an idiot, 90 degrees. 
we can see that this is to one side. I would now take a protractor and get the degree angle on that before I finish it in software. I don't have one available right now. And that entire tube depth gives us 40.5 millimeters. So again, I can just have this as my lens positive, and then I can have my M42 adapter to the outside of this face is 55 millimeters. So this volume here, in this section here, will be the volume that is taken up by the 3D printed adapter. With the magic of 3D printing, we've taken our measurements from this component here, we've taken the measurements from our, um, our screw adapter, and we have printed three, a three-piece print that will hold this element in the correct location in this. The one measurement we did not talk about was back focal distance. It is the distance from the back of this lens to your imaging plane. That is something that is easiest to find experimentally. And um, we found it for this, but I forget exactly what the, what, what the measurement is. This adapter is set out to that correct depth. Uh, here we can see that this component sits on the back of this one. These fit together. Um, when we were talking about measuring for that pin, there is our negative for the pin right there. There is our larger than 90 degree cutout for the um, remainder of that tab right there. So we are taking into account this pin and this tab on this piece. These pieces fit together simply like this. And luckily for us, force fit. Sorry. So those force fit together like that. Very happy. That gives us a exit. And you should also make sure that this exit uh, exceeds the angle that the light uh, exits this pupil. Uh, we have, it's not that big of a problem. The shallower, the better. The deeper that is, the more likely you are to um, have a vignette around the edge of your image on a full frame camera. This component, assembled like this, can now slide into here. Um, this has been designed to be extremely tight, so this will not slide in perfectly. So we are going to sand out the interior of this to slide this component in. So we can see that this is still too tight. We don't want to over sand this. We do want these components to fit together tightly, but we also don't want to force and break anything. So we're going to go a little bit further. Now we have this element, which we've sanded with our 80 grit sandpa sandpaper to hog it out a little, and then we go back with a 220 to make it smooth. Uh, we've also cleaned all the dust out, because we definitely do not want dust in our camera and or lens components. Um, these are designed to be tight, so it will fit on this. Uh, this little metal ring around here will also give us a little bit of friction on here, which is very nice for... Um, which is very nice for having a lens that will stay in, not fall out, not fall in. We definitely do not want this to go anywhere near the shutter assembly of our camera. So what I'm gonna do now is take these two components and we're gonna slide them together. So you can see that the smaller 3D printing component's already in place and is set flush with the back of this lens. If these two components are not flush, the lens will not be flat with the plane of the uh, image sensor, and you will have a focal plane that is not flat in space. So we're now going to very carefully and very cautiously slide this piece on. We'll take some force. Now we can see that these two 3D printed pieces are flush around the outside of this lens. We can see that the lens element is happily in there. We cannot detect any uh, issues with it being straight in the assembly. Okay, so now we have our two lens element adapters that have been assembled onto the lens from around it. We also have an optional hood 
that I printed as well so we could very easily attach this hood and give us a little bit of space here. One important design element that I did not mention before is that it's always good to bring your adapter out far enough on both ends where no matter which direction you set it down, the lens does not touch the table. It uh, keeps your glass a little bit safer and also if you were to just stuff this into a bag without uh, a lens cap on the face, uh, it would protect the lens to some extent. The hood would protect it even further, but we are not going to add this element during this video. So to attach these two parts, you could very easily use glue. One thing I've found works very well is a low temperature soldering iron. We are going to simply seam weld uh, between these two pieces, that gives us the option later on if we wanted to, you can run a knife around the edge and uh, take these two pieces apart. So this is a permanent for our purposes, but not permanent in the grand scheme of things method. So all we're going to do is run a soldering iron in this seam. Luckily the seam is negative, so it, uh, it keeps our soldering iron in the right place. these two components will now no longer move compared to one another. Here we have our focus screw. Again, this is a focus screw you can very easily buy. It's M42 on both ends. And here we have an M42 to E-mount adapter with a one millimeter plate on that. Our first assembly is just going to be these two components together. These fortunately just screw together. Uh, if you want to make this permanent, you could very easily go in here with a little bit of Loctite or a little bit of glue before you screw it together, and that would be permanent. We're not going to do that in today's video. It seems to work just fine without it. You can also just really crank this down, and it will not come off. So we're going to focus that down. Now, this component, this edge here, this thicker part of the cylinder, will fit into this screw mount loosely. So the way we're going to make it screw into this screw mount, so we're going to take our soldering iron from before, and in three or four places around the edge, we are simply going to melt a groove into our cylinder. And when you melt the groove in, it will also kick up some plastic out of that cut and towards our M42 screw. We're now going to use the screw to cut threads on that component. If it doesn't thread in straight, that's completely okay. When it gets to the last few screws and forces itself down, it will align itself. So you can see we're going lower and lower. You can see it's not very well aligned. Then as we get it tight, there. We are now complete, and it will also give you significantly more resistance once it's tied down. One thing you do want to do is that uh, that screwing operation will actually give us a little bit of dust inside the lens element. So you want to blow that out or shake it out. We have our assembled lens. We have a cleaning cloth because we put our hands all over this and we have our body that we are going to mount it to. So first things first, I'm going to give this just a little bit of a clean. There's also no point in cleaning this before this point. Uh, you will just do more damage to the lens elements. As you clean it, get it dirty, clean it, get it dirty, clean it, get it dirty. So we waited till the end. It is now clean. We're happy. And then we are going to simply mount it like we would any other manual focus uh, adapted lens. You of course must turn on the mode in your camera to shoot without lens. And now we can shoot. <laughs> 